We're now moving on to page 67, which covers average rate of change. So average rate of change is just, you know, a fancy way of just saying slope. All right, so from grade 10 math, when we talked about slope, uh, I believe uh, these kind of uh, ideas were brought to your attention, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And for calculus 12, the idea of average rate of change is very similar. I mean, it's still a slope. Sorry. Average rate of change, uh, instead of writing the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, it's just we're using a different kind of notation here, which is f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. So uh, for the questions in this section, we're just... Um, we're basically just finding the slope when we're being asked to find the average rate of change. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into uh, the problems uh, in this section here. So if I'm looking for the average rate of change, I can rewrite this f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. And uh, in class, we were told that a is the first number in the interval and b is the uh, second number in the interval. So now if you plug those in, that's gonna be f of four minus f of two all over four minus two. That's your average rate of change. Now, if you wanna go ahead and evaluate f of four, I mean, go back to your original function and find out what f of four is. Well, f of four is gonna be four squared plus two times um, four. So that's gonna be 16 plus eight. 16 plus eight is, well, let me just write that as just 16 plus eight. I won't simplify it. Minus, well, what's f of two? F of two is gonna be two squared plus two times two. That's gonna be four plus four, which is gonna be eight. So I put an eight there, all divided by four minus two is two. Now um, you'll notice that this eight and that eight cancel off and you're left with six, you're left with 16 divided by two, which is just eight. So the average rate of change there is just eight. All right, let's move on to uh, question number two. Question number two, I think is a bit easier because the function is just a single term here. So average rate of change, you still need to write out this long expression for the slope here. And a is one and B is three. So I, I still need to see this F of three minus F of one all over three minus one. Now F of three, if I go ahead and calculate this on the side here, F of three is gonna to equal to three cubed, which is gonna be 27. So uh, this is gonna be 27 here minus, now F of one is gonna be one cubed, which is one all over two and 27 minus one is 26. 26 divided by two is gonna be 13. So that's your final answer there. Let's move on to uh, question number three. So uh, average rate of change. Uh, this is your A, that's your B. So F of five minus F of one all over five minus one. All right, let's go ahead and evaluate F of five on the side here. So F of five, it's gonna be the square root of, well, five times two is 10, 10 minus one is gonna be nine. So uh, the square root of nine is gonna be three. So you need a three there, minus. Well, let's calculate f of one now. f of one is gonna be the square root of two minus one, which is gonna be the square root of one, which is one, all over four. So this is two over four. And now my average rate of change is just simply gonna be one half. Okay, and finally, the last question here, uh, this is the only question where you have to do a little bit of algebra instead of doing the, uh, uh, the typical crunching up the numbers here. So average rate of change equals to, now f of b, f of b is a plus h minus f of a, which is just f of a, all divided by, uh, well, this is b, which is a plus h, put that in a bracket, minus a. Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what uh, these expressions in blue, what they represent. So on the side here, I know my function is f of x equals to one over x. And if I wanna find f of a plus h, 
then what that really means is, is that anytime you see an x, the x is now being replaced with a plus h. So this is one over a plus h. So this is one over a plus h minus, now what is f of a? Okay, so f of a is simply gonna be, well, anytime you see an x, you replace that with a, so that will be now be, sorry, that will become one over a all divided by, now on the denominator here, this a and this negative a, those terms will cancel off and now you're just left with a single h. So this is your average rate of change. All right, so I'm just gonna erase all of this and um, I just need a little bit more space to operate here. Because as you can see, we have to do this uh, pretty long algebra question here to finish it off. Now. We've seen some of these. There's different ways to approach these kind of questions. Um, I, I remember using the terms like method one and method two when you're simplifying these things. I'm gonna use the method where I will circle the one of the denominators and crisscross to the other side. So a times one is a. And then uh, if I have a plus h, if I times that by negative one, it's gonna be negative bracket a plus h. And then I'm just gonna multiply the two denominators. If I do that, I get a times a plus h, all divided by h. Okay, so um, if I distribute this minus sign, you should see that this a and that a cancel off. So you're left with negative h. So you're left with negative h on the numerator, all divided by a times a plus h. Now, instead of writing div, uh, divide by h, I can change that to, well, that's really divide by h over one. I can change that to times, and then I can just um, flip this around to be one over h, and then those guys will cancel off, and now you're left with negative times one, which is negative one, all over a times a plus h. And that's your final answer there. All right, so that concludes uh, this video on average rate of change.